this is Kyle, and you are back watching Knockouts and Three Counts. And, I mean, damn, what a hell of a weekend. We had an action-packed weekend. You had Clash of Champions on the wrestling side from WWE. And on Saturday night, you had Israel Adesanya shut Paulo Costa the hell up. Man, what a weekend. We got a lot to talk about. And with his return to the show after last week, we figured we got to get his, his thoughts on at least what happened since we were talking about it last week. We've got the return of Mr. Chris James. What up, brother man? Let him know your social media and where they can find you. What's up, man? I'm Chris James. Just find me on Chris James on Facebook or James Christopher on Facebook. Other way, let's get it started. I'm happy to be back. Well, like I said, we're happy to have you back. Corey? You're getting to be on the regular over here. So let them know where to find you and uh, all that good shit. So y'all should know what it is by then, by now, huh? It's a uh, fight fan from the 313. Only thing I use is Twitter, as always. <laughs> all right, Corey. So what are your thoughts on this weekend? We had quite the hell of a weekend. We're not going to quite go into UFC 253 yet, but I just want to know, do you think that it lived up to the hype? I do. Um, in a regard, I think, um, certain aspects of the fights didn't necessarily live up to my, uh, hope and, uh, then other aspects where I didn't necessarily think, uh, some fights would shine as good as they did kind of outshine. So all in all, it was a good night, solid pay-per-view, nothing crazy though, you know, Hey, man, like I said, I mean, it had its fights, like I said, but it wasn't uh, the biggest card of the night. Uh, Chris, for you real quick, I mean, like I said, we're going to go into UFC 253 in a second, but the other thing that we had going on this weekend was WWE Clash of Champions. And anyone that's been watching or anyone that's been listening to our show, which you should be, so make sure you smash that subscribe button. Um, subscribe. Like I said, hit that subscribe button, whether you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, any of them shit, hit the subscribe button. Anyway, look, we had Clash of Champions from WWE, and it was definitely one of their better outings that they've had in quite a while, but it still had its clunks, especially for things that were out of their control, like all the injuries and things that took people out of the match. So with all that being said, what were your thoughts on the show overall? Do you think it lived up to the hype, or do you think – you know, what'd you think? Um, I, I like, actually, to be honest, Clash of Champions was my second favorite pay-per-view post-WrestleMania. So my oh. first favorite pay-per-view from WWE was Money in the Bank, and Clash of Champions was my second. I feel like it was, it, I feel like it was good. Um, and especially considering, like you said, considering the injuries, like they did their thing. Um, the triple threat ladder match was insane. I only I didn't get to see the whole thing, but like from what I saw and what from my hearing, I can't wait to just experience the whole thing. My favorite part of the whole pay per view was Roman and Jay Uso. That storytelling was man, it was something else, man. Like I, it it, it gave like if you like just the parallels, like it gave you Rocky vibes, man. You know. <laughs> um, if he dies, he dies. Like that's what it gave you. That's the vibes they gave you. I don't know if it's gonna lead up to the family end up being a faction and just Roman just saying, like, man, I'm the head of this table, so y'all gotta recognize it, follow my lead. Or, you know, it might end up to the rock stepping in. You know, Rock says something about Roman, you know, complimented that match as well. So you who knows? It might be leading up to the rock and Roman at WrestleMania, but Garden Clash of Champions, I love that. That was my favorite match. And then let me go to the Orton and McIntyre match. I loved everything, like how everybody just came in, got their come up as on Orton. I actually thought Edge was going to return, to be honest. I thought Edge was going to return. So I like that. And then, you know, to follow up to – you know, follow right. up to well, that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're jumping the gun. So we we talked about, you know, so we talked about all these big things that happened. Um, I would say that the three cornerstones of this show would probably be obviously the Roman match with Jey Uso. You got uh, obviously the Orton match, which you alluded to, which we can start there first since that's where you were at. Um, so the Orton match. Uh, you know, they've been they've been building this storyline for a while. They kind of played that off of the Edge storyline. Um, 
I have to say, although it was looked a little bit corny with the Big Show shit, I'm going to be honest, that looked a little corny. But they did good storytelling in it, though, right? Because yeah. leading up to the match, Randy Orton being the quote-unquote legend killer, you know, I mean, dude, um, you know, dude was taking people out left and right, and it really finally came back to bite him in the ass. First with Big Show grabbing him by the ankle and choke slamming him through the table. Then, you know, Christian's beating the shit out of him in the in the backstage. So then you have HPK giving him the old super kick and then throwing him off the, the ambulance. But can we talk for a minute about, look, I get it. I'm not asking you to not protect people, but this is the WWE we're talking about. Mm-hmm. How the fuck are you going to have the table so damn close that I can hear him going through the tables? Like, come on, man. If you're really supposed to get me to believe that old boy got kicked off the damn ambulance, how the fuck is there going to be a table there for him to fall through? <laughs> that shit wasn't there two minutes ago. Okay? Come on, man. Oh, my God, man. Come on, that's, man. That's, Am I like, wrong? I, I understand, but then, like I said, we just nitpicking, man. I know, but I'm just saying, little shit like that is the stuff that gets me. Don't get it twisted. I say the same shit with AEW, too. We just got through saying that when we were talking about the stuff that happened last week. Yep. So, I mean, don't get it twisted. I am an equal opportunity shit talker, all right? Mm -hmm. So, all right, with that being said, we talked about Randy Orton. You know, overall, did you like the match? I, I, I liked it. I liked it. I, it was pretty decent to me. I liked it. I just like the storytelling of it, and just like Randy Orton has been killing it all year, man. Like, like, like overall wrestling wise, like in my opinion, just Raw. Just I don't, I don't look like Raw. Just, just not hitting for me. But if I'm watching Raw, it's gonna be for Randy Orton for sure. So I feel like, yeah. I feel like that's a name I haven't heard in a long time on the wrestling end. That was like at the very tail end of when, like, I felt like I, you know, lost my interest when I was younger. It was, I remember Randy <laughs> Orton was like the up and coming. Randy Orton, man, that guy is like a 14 time champ now, for sure, going to be a Hall, Hall of Famer for sure. For sure. Like, the, he's one of those guys, Corey, like, like you said, you were watching back then. He's one of those guys, man, that like, he's just good. You know what I mean? Like you, he's one of those guys that you know is good. Like his instincts. Well, he he fits the he fits the criteria very well with the being bodied up the way he is. He plays he his characters very well. He always has, or at least from and what he's I've... got that pedigree from his family being yep. all rooted in the business. You know, like yeah, he's a he, third generation I, guy. I yeah, didn't Randy know that. Just, Randy Orton yeah. just sticks to what he does, and he excels at it. And 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 just look, and just he has a. His injury history, like he don't have no significant injuries. He has longevity as well. So, like All his right. wrestling style, you know. Gets so, Corey, I'm going to give Corey a quick little synopsis real quick. So, his dad, Cowboy Bob Orton, he was with Piper in WrestleMania 1, dude. He was, uh, I mean, he he's a Hall of Famer himself. His grandfather was in it as well. So, I mean, this is this is a family affair for him. And the crazy thing is, Orton didn't even originally want to wrestle. He was in the Marines and got himself purposely discharged so that he could get out. And then when he did, because he was getting depressed from working midnights at a gas station, he started wrestling. Like, it wasn't even like a, you know, it wasn't even like a thing, but it's crazy, dude. You listen to people talk, like you said, he fits the bill. You know, I was just listening to uh, Bully Ray on uh, Busted Open Radio this morning, and he was talking about, he said, and it's been always kind of said really since Randy first came in, uh, to the WWE man, like if you were gonna build what a wrestler should be, right? From the look to the size to the brains to the all that, it would be Randy he's Orton. Full, he's got the full package. I heard that so many times from everyone, wrestling fans to former wrestlers to current wrestlers. You exactly right, Kyle. Like literally. All right, so we've done blown enough smoke up Randy Orton's ass. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about the thing that everybody's really t- – well, hold on one minute. Since we're talking about crazy stuff and stereotypical stuff, how about that ladder match, bro? We can't get out of Clash of Champions. So there was the Jeff triple Hart, an intercontinental title match between Jeff Hardy 
AJ Styles and um 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 Sam- Sammy Zayn, the guy dis- who won the damn match, uh, and I no, can't even is- spit his name the, out. The, the, no, the, you- the official and original Intercontinental Champion, like he never lost his title. So don't disrespect Sammy Zayn, Kyle. Don't do that, man. Hey, hey, excuse don't- me, excuse me. Hear ye, hear ye. Show respect <laughs> to the champ. I hear you. Let's talk about that first, though, because that is a smart motherfucker. All right, let's exactly, talk about, man. Let's talk about this, Corey. So let me tell you how well, this. Hold on, let me let me preference those ladder matches were almost always my favorite. Those in the um, what was the uh, one where they actually put the cage? Is it a Hell cage match? Is that what they called it? Hell in a Cell. Yeah, those those That's two coming up next month, Corey. You got to come through mm-hmm. and watch it with us, bro. Those I was were, at Hell in a Cell when it was here. Too, man. Those ladder matches. Oh, yeah. You see somebody with Shane just and work, Kevin work, and work their way. The slowest climb up a ladder I've ever seen. I do construction <laughs> every day. They <laughs> climb up the ladder so slow. But you, you just see them. They're working for it. They get to the top <laughs> with the stretch, and then all of a sudden the whole fucking thing crashes down. It's just – it's inter- it is entertaining. That's and Jeff Hardy is still Jeff Hardy, still taking spots Dude, off the Jeff Hardy, man. Look, bro. Took, uh, oh, my goodness. So they were showing in the lead up to this match, they were showing the Hardy Boys return, which happened in 2017 at WrestleMania 33. Ring the fucking bell. Devin's not here to bitch because I don't have a bell to ring. But anyways, I was there. That actually was the WrestleMania that I went to that was the spawn of this show. Devin had me on all stake, no sizzle after I came back from Orlando. Jeff Hardy, after being away from WWE for how many years? And I mean, even at that, 2017, that's 18 years removed from when they debuted. And this dude is jumping off a 20-foot ladder through two ladders with guys laying across said ladders. Okay? This guy has got, I, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if he made a deal with the devil. I don't know if he's just extremely blessed or a little bit of both. But hot damn, I don't know how he's not dead, man. But Jeff Hardy once again did it again, man. He was doing his thing in that Mm-mm-mm. match. Chris, I know you only saw the highlights, but uh, as we said, Sami Zayn won the match. Now let's talk a little bit about that. So, Corey, I'll catch you up and bring you up. Oh, speed. It goes. It, it also goes back with what you were saying about the both of the Hardy brothers, really, though, about the longevity, man. You want to talk and about still going in AEW. Exactly, man. He just got a concussion and everything. So, like, man, they they still fighting. It's it's, it's a blessing, man. For real. From what, from what Kyle was showing me, because he showed me a couple clips on it, and sh- he played it off like it was nothing, though. Mm-hmm. He, yep. he, he, mm-hmm. You, know, you, mm-hmm. you got to man up. Sometimes things happen in the heat of the battle, and, you know, yep. He, yep. He, didn't, uh, he didn't let it uh, – the show yep, kept that, going. That's a true that's professional. Better. That's a true professional move. Right. And so, and that's the thing, bro. So, so this match, right? You had the ladder match. Obviously, there's going to be some risk taken. But what mm-hmm. I found very interesting about this match is they were able to do it in a way where, yeah, so you still had the bumps. You had, you know, you had all this, whatever. But they did it in a way where it made sense. Yep. It's something that we talk about so often in wrestling, man. It made sense. Like the, the bumps that were taken, they were legitimately going for the belt or yeah, I made him take a bump, but it was to take both guys out at the same time. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. doing things where it makes sense. Like if I were really in a fight, bro, I would do this. So anyway, my point behind what I'm saying. So the winning, the way he won the match, Sami Zayn pulled out not one, but two pairs of handcuffs Mm. and decided he handcuffed AJ Styles to the ropes and then handcuffed Jeff Hardy to the other ladder so neither one of them could do anything and they had to sit there and watch him climb up the ladder and take both belts. (laughs) Also, take into account, Corey, this guy's been gone for the last six months because of COVID as well. So he just comes back after six months, says, bitch, I'm still the champ, and then beats two of the best guys on the roster. I'd well, say that's quite the return. I say let's talk about how he handcuffed him, though. Let's talk about so, it. He handcuffed it Jeff Hardy. He handcuffed it Jeff Hardy's earlobe to – he handcuffed it Jeff Hardy's earlobe to the – um. He put it right Ladder. through his gauge hole. Bro. Exactly. Like he put the ha- handcuff then, through dude's ear and then handcuffed his ass to the ladder. 
<laughs> as somebody AJ who used Styles. to have gauges, that, that they don't have a ton of feeling. But if you go to pull on it even just a little bit, it's like when your grandma used to grab your ear type shit, you know? It does not feel good. Yeah, you're so hiding I couldn't, in the dark like Chris is. I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine having a handcuff through my earlobe, man. That would hurt like hell. Dude, like I said, and then they handcuffed it to a ladder. So I mean, dude, it like like I said, bro. And then the AJ Styles, he handcuffed it himself to AJ Styles. Right, they both were climbing up the ladder, but Sami Zayn had a key. He took the key out. He had the key under his tongue. Yeah, he, the he key took under the key his tongue out the whole time, so he was handcuffed and got his ass out. Yeah, he unhandcuffed himself, and then he handcuffed AJ Styles to the ladder, and then you know climbed up the ladder and got his comeuppance and got the championship. Or you can't so. not respect the man that uses his brain. Sami Zayn, even though Sami Zayn is one of, like, in my opinion, one of the best technical wrestlers in wrestling, he's very smart, like, especially with this little gimmick he's got going on. Who's the reason like why it. Shisuke Nakamura and Cesaro are the champions right now? Sami Zayn coached them up, got them together, like, come on, man. And you forgot the man's name, Kyle. I spit oh. it up. All right, look here. I've been slinging the mail all day and been having to deal with people yelling at me all day. Cut me a little bit of slack. But like I said, man, great fucking match. Great way to finish it. Great psychology in that match. And great job by Sami Zayn. You want to talk Zane, about uh, something else that's great real quick? Mm -hmm. We got these uh, these awesome shirts you guys need to go Ooh. get. Oh, oh, look at Corey getting yeah. in on the plugs. <laughs> look at Corey getting in on the plugs. That's right. You need to get you one of them shirts. I don't have mine on right now, but Jesse's got his on. Check it out on our Facebook. And like I said, if you need to get you one, we got the plug. Shoot us a DM. I still got extras. Like I said, we want to see all you guys in those knockouts and three count shirts. And all you guys that got rid of got yours already, post them up. Tag them in there. Look at there. He's got a business card right there with all the social media where you can find us at and all that good shit, man. <laughs> all right. Now, before we switch over to the UFC side of things, there's one match that we still got to talk about, Chris. And that's the one that everybody's talking about. Finally, after what, five years, fans are finally kind of getting what they've been asking for with Roman Reigns, all right? You got a lot of people who were talking all that shit about Roman Reigns ain't that good, and Roman Reigns this, and Roman Reigns that, and blah, 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 blah. Well, now that Brock Lesnar's gone, you have now opened the door for Roman Reigns to be with the one guy nobody would have ever thought he'd be with in Paul fucking Heyman. So, look, man, can you get a better mouthpiece for a guy that people don't want to hear talk? And even with that said, before you answer, Chris, Roman's cut some pretty damn good promos for oh, somebody that man. didn't think about his mic skills, bro. Roman been eight, say, man. That promo where he said, I'm chief of the island and this is my fucking table, bro. Man, when he first came back from SummerSlam, like, Roman Reigns has been A-plus ever since he's came back since SummerSlam. I don't care. And I've been the biggest Roman hater. Like, he's been A-plus, like, flawless to me, in my opinion, man. Him and Paul Heyman. Like, he, am I, he don't even – I don't know. I might, I might be just going off the deep end. But in my opinion, like, the way he's going, he don't even need Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman is just the add-on. To make it just no, like an see, eight, it, but you know? it adds that level of mystique. Yeah, it just too. yeah, it because when he talks, yep. when you got a guy like Paul Heyman that can uh -huh. articulate everything you need him yep. to say, and then you only have Roman talk when he's got mm -hmm. something important to say, it means makes everything that Roman says mean and, something. And then that it's better than it's better than Paul Heyman. You know, like every time you know Paul Brock Lesnar barely talk with Paul Heyman, so. When Roman, like, you know, with Paul Heyman, and then every time you hear Brock Lesnar talk, he got the little, you know, the little voice and the little squeaky the voice little and all voice. that, but it just, <laughs> it just be like, it just be like, ugh. But, like, with Roman and Paul Heyman, like, Paul Heyman talk his stuff, and then when you hear Roman Reigns, he be like, okay, he just added an O to it, and I like it. When all Brock right. Lesnar is hit or miss. Well, let's talk about how they did a good job of the story leading into it. So, Corey, again, I know you aren't you aren't the big wrestling guy, so so I can I can catch you up. 
Roman Reigns and Jey Uso are the guys that were going for the WWE title here. They are both members of the famous Samoan dynasty family, which is also the same family as The Rock. Mm -hmm. So these guys have been arguably one of the best tag teams WWE has had in years, being Jey and Jimmy, the Uso brothers. So his brother, uh, Jimmy, went out. Jay wins a championship scramble match to face his cousin, Roman Reigns. So in the lead up to this whole thing, that's what they were talking about. And you got Jay on one side where Jay's talking about how, you know, I'm the guy that, you know, I've always kind of been in their shadow. I've always been good, but I've always been one of the Usos. It's always been Roman's the guy. He's like, this is my chance to step away from not only Roman, but step away from my brother and all that. And they, mm. and they brought in his dad who the Usos dad is Rikishi. And then Roman's oh. dad is one of the wild Samoans. So they, they brought them in and they're talking about it. And, you know, they're showing clips of them when they were playing football as kids and everything. So he did a real good job of tying in like the real life stuff, you know, that comes with it. Hey, Kyle, hey. not to my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was about to say, not to mention, like you said, like he just like Jay is the youngest Uso. Jimmy's married to Naomi. Jimmy's been on, like, you know, the Total Divas show and all that kind of stuff. So Jay always, like you said, always been in the background. So yeah, he's finally getting his spotlight. Right. And so going into this match, you know, but like he said, it's a totally different Roman Reigns. So in this match, man, I really enjoyed the way that Roman came out. And it's like, look. We're family, we're cousins, but look, bro, I'm making it clear here. I am the head of the fucking table. And he kept reiterating that. I think it was a little corny that they had him come, they had the winner get laid. But I mean, hey, but uh, just, as far as the match, man, Roman beat the shit out of Jay Uso, man. But like Jay had his spots. Jay showed that he had that dog in that fight, but I feel like they did a really good job especially in the finish, the way they were able to kind of really drive home. Look, bro, you can fight, but there's levels to this shit. Like Roman got on top of him, Corey, and he's got him in full mount, just laying down on him, picks his head up, points it towards the camera. And he said, say it. He goes, I'm going to keep beating you until you tell everybody I'm at the head of the table and just proceeded to pound the shit out of him until his brother, Jimmy comes out with a towel and eventually throws it in all the while, while Jay's reaching out, begging him not to throw the towel in great storytelling, bro. Yeah. yeah. Great storytelling. See, that's the shit that's missing from wrestling for me, man. It was good. It was great. It, it, it drove Roman home as a um, dominant figure going forward. Uh, obviously WWE needs to get their shit together on all that stuff. But Chris, do you got any other different thoughts than I do on that one? Or just gave me Ivan Drago versus Apollo Creed vibes. Like, man, oh, that's sure, how bad bro. that's how bad Roman did Jay Uso. Like, that was top tier storytelling, man. Like, it was just unbelievable, man. Like, Jay Uso fought his hardest, but Roman Reigns just let him know. Like, it and it's then just it shit. just it just after the end of the match, like. Like, you know, Jay Uso came out with the little, you know, little, you know, the little floral, little necklace thing. I, I don't know what it's called, but, you know, the he lay. came out with the look. Yeah. The lay. the lay. And he came out with that. And then at the, you know, Jay Uso came out with that. Roman Reigns just came out with his championship. No shirt. Just his fans. And then after the match, they, he took Jay Uso's lay. And just, you know, I'm the head. Like, I'm this, I'm the top dog. Like he left him late. I'm the tribal like, chief. I mean, like, oh my goodness! Like, man, it's, it's interesting the fact that they even bring up the match because I'm sure you know, as you guys being big wrestling fans, I mean, I'm sure you kind of when you see the writing on the wall like that, you kind of expect to to play out a certain way. You know, they're taking like you were saying, like the little brother essentially out of the group, and they're trying to give him a shine. So you kind of think it's gonna play in his favor, and then once you know. Once there is no turn, and I mean, don't get it twisted. Once he gets, you know, his, once he gets his ass kicked for five minutes, ten minutes, and there's no, there's no bend. You're like, oh, is this really how it's, you know, is this really how they're about to do him? Right, mm-hmm. and not to mention, I mean, dude, it's not like Jay really showed up. Like I said, I feel like this was the perfect chance for him to really show, like, look, yeah, I'm a tag team guy, but don't get it twisted. I can yep. go regardless the situation. Yep, I feel situation. like. I feel like this is going to lead up to him just even being like, you know, how the new day is with Kofi. Like, hit this, I feel like this is going to lead to Jake getting opportunities in the mid card and all that. 
beyond just tag team. So I feel like this was a good opportunity for Jay to just showcase what he has as a single competitor, and it's going to lead up to something bigger or just even better feuds as a single competitor. Well, do you think that this is going to cause a rift in between the Usos now? It pop. It that's what I was saying. I feel like it's gonna probably end up leading to two things: either they're gonna have the faction with Roman Reigns or Jimmy and Jay just feuding because Jay didn't want to quit and Jimmy just you know did what he had to do for his brother, just in protection of his brother. But you know, we will have to see. I feel like SmackDown, regardless, gonna make something. You know, gonna make it good regardless. And last but not least, before we get off the wrestling, okay. We saw Raw. Obviously, SmackDown's got to come still, so we don't know what's going to come out of the Roman Reigns thing. But one thing that we do know that they keep trying to further on, or whatever you want to call, uh, whatever you want to call it, is the the the, the storyline between Mysterio and Rollins with now the injection of his daughter Aaliyah. Now, I appreciate you trying to be different, but I feel like the more they're trying to drag this shit out, like I thought when you kept it between the three of Ray and Seth and Dominic, it was one thing, but now it's like, I appreciate the new wrinkle, but it just kind of seems fumbly. What do you think? I agree, man. Like, I don't know what are like what they are doing. Like regarding this, like, I don't know what it's going to lead up to. I can understand they're trying to do something different, but beyond the Eddie and Rey Mysterio stuff, be like back in the day. But like this is just, it's just. I feel like, I feel like Seth Rollins. I feel like it should have just been over him. Dominic and Ray should be on some bigger and better things, and I feel like Seth Rollins and Murphy should be on their feud right now. But it's still okay, like but, it's just dragging it on. And okay, it's just but let like, me ask you this. I don't understand. So do you think that what they're trying to do though? Because like I kind of have a theory. See here, my theory is the reason why they're bringing Aaliyah in is because Murphy, Murphy's been getting the shit smacked out of him by Seth for a few weeks now. I don't know about you, but as a grown ass man, okay, look, bro, I'm only, I'm not taking you keep beating the shit out of me like that. I feel like he's trying to be slick and then he's going to end up fucking him over in a little bit. That's kind of what I feel like we see coming. You feel like he's going to side with the Mysterios or he just going to be on his own I think and do he's going to turn on Aaliyah. Seth. Maybe not side with the Mysterios, but I think he's going to turn on him because, I mean, damn, he keeps beating him like a redheaded stepchild. Right, right. Of course, I feel like that's going to eventually, they might just have a match at Hell in a Cell. I feel like they, I feel like they are going to have a match at Hell in a Cell, actually. Hey, man, Hell in a Cell is coming up. I'm going to get Corey to watch it. And then we can get his thoughts on it being a complete unaway from wrestling. You've got NXT TakeOver next uh, this Sunday. This Sunday. Uh, look, man, stay tuned to the channel. Fire. Coming out probably Friday, we're going to have our picks for the NXT TakeOver this weekend. There's a lot of good things coming up. But we were talking about people getting beaten like redheaded stepchild. Okay. Let's talk about what we did on Saturday night. On Saturday night, we had a hell of a time. We were talking – UFC 253, man. We had all the homies over there. Your boy turned 28. And thank you to all of you who listened that reached out and said happy birthday to your boy. I appreciate you. We saw some people get their ass whipped, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Corey, I'm going to start with you since I know you don't know as much on the wrestling end. But one of the fights that we talked about in our prediction video was the fight between Diego the Nightmare Sanchez and Jake Matthews, uh, do you think I it's time wish for? I wouldn't have brought it up. What'd you say? <laughs> Almost <laughs> wish I wouldn't have brought it up. Go on, <laughs> Corey Jinxed him. It's his fault, and because Diego probably ate beef to tar. Oh, wait, did I say that? Uh, anyway, Diego did not look so hot in this fight. I love Diego Sanchez, man, but Diego Sanchez took an ass whooping. We know he's got three fights left on the contract. What were your thoughts on the fight, Corey? And uh, what do you think going forward? Well, well, before I go uh, good old balls deep style, I want to ask you guys a quick question. Um, do you think Diego is actually going to finish out those last three fights on his contract? I think Diego will want to. Uh, I think he gets at least one of those fights, but it all depends on what happens in that next fight. Uh, Chris, you got there after that, so I don't know if you saw the Diego Sanchez fight, but I know you know who Diego is. 
Do you think it's time for him to lace him up, or should he go out like Wash a G and take gang. those last three fights? Wash gang. Unless you just in it for the money. Wash gang. I mean, it's over. He, did, he didn't look like himself, man. He came in that <laughs> fight very, very flabby by his standards. Dude, what know? about that henna tattoo? <laughs> Can we please talk about how this man had a damn son henna tattooed on his belly button? I what thought it was, was I don't know what you're making a big deal about it for. I thought what it was, was great. that? <laughs> it looked like his daughter went and grew with a yellow crayon around his belly button. Like yeah, it looks like it looked definitely like some shit my six year old would try to draw on me with some markers. That's what, saying, all, man. Bro, that's what I'm saying. Come on, man. But but in all honesty, though, I definitely I don't feel as though that was a retirement level performance. I just feel as though the UFC needs to they need to realize with and I feel as though there's a lot of fighters that are on this tier of their career where they're at the end. Like there's no if ands or buts. They're at the end of their career. But I think uh, some of them have such a name stay that feeding them to these young up and comers uh like jake matthews that that just doesn't do anybody any favors man nobody wants to see diego get beat up by some young up-and-comer nobody wants to see that and they've done that to him in his last like four or five fights i mean i get that the guy has a has a very high level skill you know technique wise but everything slows down with age man i don't think it's necessarily fair to keep feeding them these young guys like this i mean I think he. Well, I think what do you he want still, him to do? Give him bums? No, I don't. I don't think bums is the thing. I think they need to do a thirty-five plus league for these guys. <laughs> stop, stop giving them these twenty-five-year-olds, these twenty-six-year-olds that are hungry as hell, that are you know where their technique levels are high enough that you know they can compete. So it's not just like a raw youngness against you know veteran savvy because that's not the case they're putting high level guys in there against them just to try to make a name and i don't think that's the right mm -hmm. move i totally agree with you Corey, because they do the same thing in boxing bro so yep. yeah boxing clears day man the same the same exact move i mean it's it's all combat sports i mean that's that's what you do you 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 work so hard to promote this guy for years and years and years and towards the end of his career, you use all that promotion that you did and you try to steal that thunder with who you match up against them. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's a classic, you know, bait and switch on mm -hmm. the uh, on the hype. But I there, like I said, I, I don't want to go listing a ton of names, but like a perfect example of this in my eyes is like a uh, like an Anthony Pettis. I think Pettis is doing he still has some very good fights he still puts on every time that he shows up but i don't think feeding him these young guys and these title challengers is the move i, I just don't well what, I think but okay it, but then what do you do though on the flip side of that though because you can't have a guy like that fighting bums and it's not no, like he loses to all these guys either no i completely agree and that's where i say like a not uh, an MMA seniors league, not not Bellator style, because they'd be Anthony pushing it Pettis into the fifties. Senior, season. I'm I'm, jo I'm joking when I say senior. I mean thirty five plus. I mean Anthony Pettis is what thirty six, thirty seven. He's definitely at the tail end of his career, a hundred percent. Um, I, I I agree with that. I'm not saying he's not on the tail end of his career, but I mean I just I mean it's not like it's time to put my man out of the pasture yet. I'm just saying. No, I and that's and that's why I say I think they need to do. A, I think uh, some of the matchmaking they do on these guys just makes me scratch my head a little bit. That's all. All right. Well, let's talk about the matchmaking that happened that didn't make us scratch our heads. All right. We were kind of half right on our picks. I mean, yeah, we picked we picked Izzy to win. But we both picked Ray as the win, and damn, I did too. Damn, I did too. That was not how this fight. That's how I thought oh this fight God. was about to happen. Oh all right. God. First off, I, I, go ahead. No, go go ahead. I didn't realize. First off, shout out to the new champ Jan Blakovich for making us all look like some assholes. <laughs> 
And uh, I want to know, when am I going to start betting on these underdogs, man? Because this would have been another one where I could have got a grip. Yeah. Yeah, you could have walked away with some change on that one for sure. Could have got a grip, man. But going in, going into this fight, though, I would have not had confidence to put money on Jan. Uh, see – the only thing that made me nervous, I I watched so much damn. Oh, I wouldn't have put it. money on him before the fight. Clearly, I didn't. I picked Reyes. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm saying. Is I watched so much damn MMA media and a lot of interviews, especially with the bigger fights coming up and stuff like that. And check out those interviews right down below the video. One yes. thing that uh, Dominic Reyes kept mentioning in every single interview he did the whole way leading up to this thing is how short of a camp it was. He was building himself an excuse in the fact that both fighters had the same short camp. I mean, you can't, if you're going to accept the fight, you can't, it, it's, it wasn't only the way that he kept mentioning it, it was, it was like the mannerisms he would use when he would say it. Like he would, he almost was kind of accepting the fact that it was going to be a harder fight because it was so short. And that had me really worried going into our picks video. I, I forgot to actually mention that aspect of it, but I still thought he was going to be able to pull it out. I really did. And um, he just didn't look like he was able to get anything going. I no, mean, he wasn't. Well, and, and, and the flip side to that, you know, you mentioned going into the fight, how it kind of almost seemed like Reyes was kind of building himself an excuse on the flip side to that. Shout out to Blakovic. As soon as he knocks out Reyes, what's the first thing out of his mouth? John Jones, let's go. To where John Jones has already responded to it. Now, do you think John Jones is going to come back and try to challenge him for this title? And I pose that question to either one of you. I think it's an absolutely mm. terrible call out. No, he don't want no smoke, bro. I think it's he an absolutely no terrible call out. Because like, the, fact that the man just vacated the belt. He's already in the process. Or do you say that for Blakovich or for Jones? I'm saying for Blakovich to call out Jones is a terrible call out. Is it though? Because he just called out the best of all time. The best of all time that just willingly gave up that belt who was supposed to fight him and chose yeah, not to now because, that, because that it wasn't a big was enough fight for him. So I think what you do is you rub a little bit of mud back in Jones' face and say, doesn't this belt look all shiny on my waist? That would be a good way to call him out. Not. Hey, I, think that, I respect the fact that he didn't mince no words. He said, I want the smoke. Yeah, speaking of John Jones, did y'all see what John Jones said about Izzy on his Instagram? Very well played. Very well timed, sir. Corey, have you seen the... What uh, is he right? Is he's right titty shit or what you what you talking about? John, John Jones posted something today, pretty much saying like he's been calling out Izzy. Is he just talking? He don't want the smoke for real. Well, I so in my eyes, I think Izzy's actually playing it smart because I think he needs to build up his own star more. Even if he truly feels as though he can beat Johns or Jones right now, I think. Clearing out his division, showing that he is the true n- no bullshit champion at 185 before you even try to talk about but who else is like there really for him to fight though at 85 though? I mean, he beat, um, he beat Jared, Romero. Jared Cannonier. Right, he's got that fight. There's a couple fights think, lined left up, but I I'm think, saying like there's a long. I think we, I think Whitaker deserves another fight, even though he got dominantly beat the first time. He was the person that he took the belt from. And if he can beat Cannoneer and Till coming back off of that knockout loss, I think he deserves a, a rematch. Okay, um, sure. If he gets those I wins, think, I got no problem I think, with that. Um, what's it? Uh, why can't I think of his name? Uh, Jack Hermanson. I think Jack Hermanson, if he gets uh, the win over Till, I think he's deserving as well. I think there's still a couple people in his division. I think. He, no, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm not saying right away, but I'm saying it's not like there's a line of fights left for him. Yeah. I think in my there's eyes, maybe three, I think four, in my five, eyes, two, three. two more years. If he does two fights a year, possibly three, but the average when you're a belt holder is two. 
if he does two fights a year, that'll be four more contenders out of the way. And I think at that point, that's what five, that's, that'll be six or seven defenses. And at that case, there's no, there's no argument, at least in the, the modern era after Anderson, that he would be the best. And then it would even be arguable with him and Anderson, whether or not he's the best. Like I said, I, I have no problem with that one. Um, I like Blachowicz at 205. I mean, I feel like there's still obviously a lot of um, matches, matchups for him there. Uh, as far as Izzy and Jones, I mean, it's a fight I'd like to see. But I was just talking about this with one of my coworkers earlier. So here's my problem with that matchup for Izzy. John Jones and Israel Adesanya are both very crafty strikers. They're both very creative. They both have a lot of movement. They have a lot of uh, shots that come from a lot of different angles. That I feel like could be, you know, could kind of cancel each other out a little bit. And I feel like what would end up making the difference in that fight is the fact that on the ground, John Jones will be a much better wrestler. Not to mention, you have to remember, John Jones was cutting down to make 205 and is a decent size if he's going up to heavyweight. So Absolutely. him fighting against a guy who is an 85 pound champ again, like Corey, like you and I were talking about, or uh, yeah, it was you and I were talking about it when we did our picks video, uh, you know, the size along, like the skill level is already there with both guys, but the skill level along with the size to hold you there. Yeah. And yeah, that that's, a difference. that's Especially, dangerous. Especially like you said, when you talk about the fact that they're striking, you know, not only not only they're two hand striking, but they're four point, really eight point striking, especially in Jones's case, because he uses knees and elbows very well. But their eight point striking is very similar. Their knees, their elbows, their fists, their kicks, they're very similar across the board. So that's where that's where I agree with you 100 percent. I think if there's anything that really separates the two, it's the fact that. Jones was able to take fucking DC down. I mean, right. And that's my point. So you he's think not he's not going to be able to get to Izzy because Izzy's not going to throw all that crazy shit like he does against everybody else. Cause Jones can throw that crazy shit too. Jones yeah. told him he's not about to kick by someone. He said, I will literally rip your arm off. Well, yeah. why would you? I mean, if you want to talk about biggest advantage in the fight, Jones has got the big advantage with his ground game. I feel like their striking mm -hmm. could pretty much cancel each other out other mm -hmm. than the fact that jones will have more power i would imagine all right let's well, get hold on hold on real quick while we're still on the topic of izzy not to cut you off but i want to get your guys's opinion because i've been seeing a lot of opinions all over twitter about it what do you guys think about izzy's uh antics uh pre-fight post-fight right in the time. octagon when he fucking humped costa i mean there, there was a little bit going on in that fight, huh? I feel like Kyle's about, yeah, I feel like we was about to lead up to that, too. All right. So we were talking about this a little bit before we went on the air. So first of all, uh, do you, do I think some of the stuff Izzy did maybe could have, people could have said was too much or something? Okay, sure. Okay. You could say that. But at the same time, Costa was talking a blue streak of shit between him and his coach talking about skinny man this. And skinny man that, mm -hmm. and you could just get the title ready right now and all this other shit. I mean, you talked all that shit, bro. You know the old saying, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Who said that? Woo! Ric Flair. Anyways, listen to the Nate. You got to beat the man. And Costa did all that shit talking, and what happened? Got that ass whooped. A whole lot of nothing is what happened. He, he got he that ass. Get, he couldn't get a damn thing going. And is that is that nerves because it's his first title fight? Is that nerves because he knows what Israel can do to him? That's Israel's or, skill, bro. That ain't got nothing. That's to what do. I, that was going to be my third option. Or was that Israel actually? That's implying? Israel implementing his game because the number one thing that he said going into that fight that he said would be the difference was that I will pick my shots better. And what did I say mm -hmm. in the pre-fight video? Again, check it out down there. If you don't believe me, there's video proof. I agree I, with you. He he picked his shots entirely way better, but not only did he pick his shots, Costa didn't throw any shots. That's well, right. Cool. 
But I don't think that that was from scared. I think every time Costa went to drive in, though, you got to remember how many leg kicks did he? A lot. His leg, mm-hmm. his leg was tore up. Yeah, so we he, talked he, about he that. Was welcome, he was welcome, uh, welcoming them. He was. T- he kept trying to tap his leg, saying, "Go ahead, keep kicking." I mean, I thought that was a fucking terrible idea, but right, and that's my point, though. So every time he would go to explode in, Izzy circling out and kicking the shit out of his leg. So I mean, Izzy played the perfect game plan, laid him out. Um, I don't know, I don't know what's going to be the next fight for Izzy here, but I do know Costa for one. He could say he wants an immediate rematch. He could say he wants this. He could say he wants that. Homie, you better win you a few fights before you even think about coming to not off no performance like that. You ain't getting no rematch off that. that. Terrible. Did you just did did you guys hear that they uh they told Joanna that she's not getting the rematch after that fight of the year last year? So if you put on a fight like that and you can't get a rematch with the champ, you think you're gonna get a rematch when you didn't even throw the five punches? What was Joanna coming off before that fight, though? Because I feel the like she fight, had... the Wei Li Zhang fight, the fight. No, of the I know year. that, but I know, but I'm saying before that, though, wasn't no, she coming that. off some losses? No, she was coming off a couple wins into the title fight, and she lost to no her last fight. I think before the title fight might have been Shevchenko. If I'm, I might be wrong, but I, I think that might have been. I think. She... No, because I think she kicked somebody else's ass to get back into like the one. That's why. I said, yeah, I mean that makes sense. I'd have to, I'd have to look, but if they're if they're not offering rematches to literal fight of that is that was, look, you heard it right there in that link. Brian, the fucking machine cage, said it himself. That women's fight was one of the best fights of all time. Yeah, I don't even think you need to put women's in front of it. Best fight, just, period. Yeah. He said I think it. That, it's one of the yeah. best fights ever. That was straight out of Brian Cage's mouth. I didn't bring it up. We had to sit there and uh, spit it out, like sit there and think of the names for a minute. Like I said, make sure you check out that interview <laughs> when you get done with it. I'm not that big. USC savvy. I already know which fight y'all are talking about because I literally saw that fight myself, and that shit was just amazing. That's what I'm saying. I that mean, was a dog fight. fight. And if you can't get a rematch <laughs> off that, <laughs> How the hell you think you're gonna get a rematch off that performance, Paulo? That ain't happening. Well, like I said, man, I feel like I feel like he wrote a check his ass couldn't cash. But uh Correct. I feel like he got the real life version of oh shit, that guy just killed me. Oh, he's running up. Oh damn, he just teabagged me in a video game. <laughs> he got the real life version of that. Like, oh shit, there he is. Oh, I'm dead. Oh shit! Here's his balls in my face. All right, Corey. Well, another thing that we need to talk about on the MMA end. Okay, so we talked about UFC 253. Uh, I think the co-main event and main event uh, both were shocking. Like I said, I enjoyed it. We had a great time while we were watching it. But there's a lot of other things that are going on that kind of lead into, you know, what are we going to see next on the MMA thing side of things? Uh, coming up here in two weeks we've got uh the return of kenny the boss cross fresh off of his signing with xfc he will be fighting in their lightweight tournament november 11th live on nbc we'll be having him on to talk about that we've also got the return of brett big dog martin ahead of his fight with bigfoot silva for torah mma in florida like i said man mma is really starting to open back up we got wxc is going to be doing their thing october 30th here in southgate uh, what I'm getting at by bringing these fights up, Corey, is now that you're starting to see more of MMA coming back with like the leagues like LFA and CFFC and all those kind of things, what do you think is the next natural progression as far as MMA? I think um, – it. see, I would love to take a poll out of our listeners and watchers and viewers in general. How many people actually viewed the PFL season last year when that when it was in full swing? Because I, I think um, besides the fact that they had slightly lackluster talent-wise, talent I think that the system that they did, the season of four fights and, you know, you fight your way and you earn your way into a playoff system and then it's, you know. 
Oh, I definitely I think it's refreshing. It's a little different for sure. Yeah, it it, it almost brings back the reminiscent feels of like uh, the, the, the old, old tournament, tournament styles. You know, the one night tournaments they used to do. Well, um, I also I also is think, now doing that too. I th- I also think Bellator does a decent job with that when they do their tournaments. Um, were we were like actually talking with, the, huh? I said, for me, they were like the originators when it came to like, at least in recent times. I mean, obviously you had the pride. You can, and go, all the, you can go back all the way to Strike Force. They were the big oh, pushers sure. in Strike Force. Sure, but I mean, in recent times, Bellator has been the one that you see and hear about people having, uh, you know, tournaments and things, like I said, but it, there's a lot of them running them. I mean, XFC is getting ready to run theirs that Kenny Cross is in. You had IFL back in the day that had the full on teams thing. Yeah. Well, and I, I'm trying to remember if this was something that we actually said on video or if this is a conversation we had off of the video. But I, I think a lot of this uh, progression that we're seeing really boils down to Dana White jumping the gun and getting everything back moving as fast as he could. I think that I think we're experiencing a giant boom in our sport right now with a, the amount of eyes that are on it just because of the simple fact that people got to get entertained by something they might not have realized that they were would be entertained by because that was the only thing that was a live attraction on at that time i can totally agree with that Corey. like i I, the question for both of you guys though is do you think that this is something that not just ufc but mma as a sport is going to be able to sustain it though are they going to be able to keep that buzz you know that they've gained those new eyes that they've gained from the ufc fight island stuff and all the stuff that's going on now that you're seeing all these other leagues coming in do you think they'll be able to sustain it or do you think it's kind of one of those things that want as things kind of start to get back to whatever the new normal is going to look like do you think it's something to where mma may lose some of its steam again well see i I actually think no. I actually think it's going to be the opposite. I think this sport is on a very huge incline, and I think uh, I think this quarantine ended up kind of being like a cycle of steroids to kind of increase the uh, you think process. The arm, sure. Yeah, because um, you like you were just saying XFC, correct? For Kenny Cross, they're moving to NBC another giant network who never showed who ne- who never showed any type PFL of content was on sports. NBC sports though huh PFL was on NBC sports back in the day but they're on ESPN now yeah but they were on N- NBC within the last couple of years though yeah i believe it was 3 years ago but but showing interest enough to where they bought a promotion to be able to put it on their network um, same thing you're seeing with Bellator moving to CBS coming off of that's a um, good move Paramount. for Bellator because Paramount was not a good network. No, it just didn't fit. It's a movie channel that once a month would show fights. It it, it just didn't make sense. Um, but I think that alone will do a huge thing because I think what it'll do is those Monday Tuesday night viewers of TV shows they're going to all of a sudden start seeing commercials for the XFC this weekend at Saturday, Saturday at nine. And, and mm-hmm. that type of stuff really does a big job in marketing. I mean, when you start seeing it on the local level like that, on the big TV channels and stuff, it, it really adds a legitimate side that maybe people turned a blind eye to before. Uh, well, Corey makes a good point with that marketing stuff because it's the same with, Smackdown on Fox, man. I'm telling you. So Corey makes a brings up excellent points with where are net. I think it's gonna be on the boom as well. Like I think USC and MMA as in general, post quarantine is gonna be on an uprise. I think this is exactly what MMA needed. I mean, obviously you've got your diehards just like you do in wrestling, but at the same time, I feel like with the lack of other sports, it kind of opened a door to kind of bring people back in it. Um, Mm -hmm. obviously there's a lot to talk about, man. There's a lot to be excited for both in MMA and for us diehards and anybody who's watching wrestling, you've always got your hope in wrestling. Otherwise you wouldn't be watching the shit. Well, should we give them a little sneak peek before we get out of here? What we got coming next week? Absolutely. So 
as we mentioned, we just interviewed Brian the Machine Cage from AEW. Any of you guys who have been paying attention to any of our social media at KL3C Pod, like you should be doing, know that he just had his theme song redone by Montezzi. He is the co-host of the Swerve City Podcast with Isaiah Swerve Scott from WWE NXT. We're going to be bringing him on next Tuesday. We're going to talk about what goes into making these themes for these guys. What kind of things are they asking for in these songs? What it's like to work with AEW while still working with WWE and being able to work with New Japan and everything else and get his thoughts on what's going on in the worldwide world of wrestling. And like we said, MMA ain't going nowhere because after that we got two straight weeks of fire interviews for you as we bring you the return of Kenny the Boss Cross before his fight for XFC in their lightweight tournament and the return of Brett Big Dog Martin before he goes to war against Bigfoot Silva for Tora MMA in Florida. So like I said, till next time and in the in-between time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stay safe. Peace.